Hello and welcome back to the Schmuseum Museum where we have a few visitors today. Firstly, we're going to be joined by Johnny Smith from the Late Break Show, formerly on Fifth Gear. In fact, we actually met back in 2013 when we filmed an episode of Fifth Gear together, car spotting in London with a Renault Zoe. Well, Johnny's gonna be coming down with his famous tatty old chairs. We're gonna be shooting an idle chat video together. Then later on, we're gonna be joined by a car in a famous color around here, MSO Cerulean Blue, the color worn by my Senna, previously on my 675 LT Coupe. And today, we're gonna to be joined by a guest with a brand new McLaren 765 LT in Cerulean Blue. So we've got a lot going on. Firstly, I think we need to park up the Vantage Roadster, pop it into the line to look nice and tidy. We'll sort out any seat charges and make sure everything is looking the part, ready for Johnny's arrival to shoot the video together today. The first thing we need to do then is to move the Vantage Roadster to park it up properly and I think Tom's going to have the honours. Indeed, and I now see a fantastic example of why you always hand me the valet key for the GT8, because obviously if you drop that, that doesn't look very pretty, and from my understanding, they're not cheap. They are not indeed. They are about £1,200 for a new Crystal ECU. You're going to drive the, the legend, I think. Yes, <laughs> thank you very much for the honours. Let's get this parked up and looking pretty. I don't really know how else to describe this car. It feels surreal having it back. Let's take a listen to the startup. <laughs> it's such a familiar sound for me. Now there are many things about the car that we do need to get fixed up and looking a little bit prettier. But first up is to park it between the GTR Pro and the GR Yaris. So let's give this a go. Come all the way around. We have a bit of a system to kind of guide which way to turn, to go straight, that kind of thing. This is where I Guy Tom and hopefully we get it completely right. You can see kind of how this works and you end up with a car in the bay. This is going all right. Is this going all right? This is going all right. That's pretty good. And cut. Are we nicely lined up? Maybe a touch further back, a touch small smidgen back. Perfect. In the line looking good <laughs> look at all of the colors of the cars here this is what i love the most i've always liked my bright colored cars coming today with the taycan filming with johnny he does a lot of things with evs many of which i've watched in the past nicely done looking good i've really needed to adjust that seat first that was yeah it. it's quite well even for close. me it sits quite high interesting thing aren't the seats ludicrously cushy Yes, very different compared to the GTA. That is not what I expected jumping in it for the first time. No, they're probably equivalent to the seats that Johnny's about to turn up with. But anyway, car is parked. Let's tidy up some of these cables and things. And then uh, very shortly, Johnny should be here. When you have a collection of cars parked like this, of course, you're not driving every car every minute of the day. And batteries in cars like this, lightweight lithium batteries in many of them, batteries that are made for weight saving, which means that they don't have the most amount of charge possible. You want to keep them plugged in, which is why we're partnered up with SeaTech and all of the cars are living on smart chargers. Now for today, I'm actually just going to unplug these and pack them away just to have the cars sitting here on their own. But thankfully, to make this a little bit easier, SeaTech introduced their extension leads, which mean that you can have, well, we will have more trickle charger sockets installed around the walls, but you don't have to have plugs absolutely everywhere. So we'll just pop these away for the time being. I'll pack them up in just a moment, but it means a quick run around the cars that are currently plugged into them. So we've got the LT, the Ford GT, and we'll do the center as well but each of them have different mechanisms. The LT has a cigarette socket in the front. The Ford GT has the clamps here. Not too complicated to do. Close that back down. And then on the center, you have this very funky nose bridge, which is always a mission to work out how exactly to open and close it. But it's roughly here. There we go, got the catch. So I'll just tuck those away and Johnny should be here with the team in a moment. Here we are then. Johnny's arrived, how you doing? <laughs> I'm good, I'm good, thank you. I piled the pressure on by asking him to reverse the chimney inside, <laughs> load it up <laughs> with the trailer, with the famous chairs. This, this trailer is, is in a terrible state. The Don't trailer is the chairs are, but this is the thing, nobody wants to see the tatty chairs. Like, like these are the no, thing. They are, I know. They've had an awful life. 
These chairs were my own. Oh, good. good to see it. Really good to see it. Yeah, these chairs were my own lounge chairs. Yeah. Uh, and now they and now they've been banished to being either in a conservatory or in a garage. And well, all famous props, right? All famous props. <laughs> <laughs> the problem is, is I've sort of made a rod for my own back because they're really impractical to move. Yeah, they, they are so heavy and they don't fold. You can't dismantle them. But isn't that part of the charm? Isn't that? Why? I wouldn't be saying that at one in the morning when you're trying to like get them in and out of a car or something. <laughs> You'd be like, I wish it was just a, a deck chair or a camping chair. Well, you teased you were loading these up last night. I saw a comment over on your post where people were saying you should come here one day. I know. And here you are. That, that is weird because I've told nobody. I told nobody. People can mind read. People can actually yeah, mind that, read. I was really quite shocked at that when you sent that to me because I thought, of all the things to say. <laughs> Completely random. Well, welcome, welcome. Um, I guess amazing. you need to get unloaded a little bit and I'm going to unload. Yeah. And I'll probably move the treader away from it. <laughs> All the carbon fibre and all the uh, amazing supercars that it's got. This is from my father-in-law, and it's <laughs> with mint 10 inch tens. I'm running tens. Why not? Yeah. But towing with a jimmy. Yeah. That's one of the cool things. Towing with a jimmy. Yeah. I, I, I had a jimmy briefly back at the time, back back when it launched. I know you did. And then changed it up. <laughs> the G wagon G63 came. Well, <laughs> I guess it, it sort of is the same kind of thing, just yeah. a different. I, I put G, I put G oh. wagon style light clusters on mine. That's as far that. as I've gone. But it's still cool. It's no. I, there are some really really cool projects that people have done with jimnies, making them actually look like G wagons. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Let's get unloading. Let's get cracking on. Done. Here we are then. The famous chairs have arrived. Yeah. <laughs> Infamous. Infamous yeah. indeed. They, they've seen better days. But that's the charm. I've seen some good days, but they've seen some terrible days. Yeah. And they've seen they've seen some pretty impressive car collections and garages and locations as well. Yeah, they have. Yeah. The first the first one I did was was Ian Callum. Yeah, I remember for the, that. For the idle chair. And Ian was actually quite disgusted with them. <laughs> I can imagine. Because he had a really nice pair of chairs. But also his pristine, lovely presented garage. Yeah. They're more in keeping with this. They're more at home in this kind of agricultural barn environment. This is nice though. It is nice. This, this is nice. It's a very British type setup. You yeah. know, lots of inspirations for this. The likes of Harry's garage and his setup and yeah. uh, Zach, Zach's garage as well. That barn on a farm, repurposed, quiet, peaceful, yeah. great, a way, great way to have a decent amount of space without going overkill. And now, I thought I'd bring the chairs, come and see you with the chairs. The mobile studio for the idle chat. Before we get fully rolling, we're going to have a quick listen to the GT4 start. The chairs are back over to that side. We filmed the idle chat episode and we're now going to be taking out the Vantage Roadster, which means getting that started. Let's pull it into the middle so we can rig it up with some cameras after we had parted. In fact, we moved all of the cars slightly more towards the middle, which is really very interesting when you think about it from a layout perspective and how you see the cars coming together. Although, if we wanted to pull the G63 forwards, it would be quite difficult. I thought that was off for a moment. Obviously, everything closed up just for the time being. But we're going to go for a run with this very shortly. And then we'll also be joined by the 765 LT. You've upgraded your ride. Yeah, I've gone for patina, two wheels, <laughs> mini. Hook this back up but to the... Uh, very, very quick. Look, it can corner really easily. Super easy to do very, to get, yeah. get it mounted back on. Johnny and I have been out for a run then in the Vantage Roadster, but our next guest that you might be able to hear in the background has a car in a matching colour to my McLaren Senna, the famous Cerulean Blue on the new McLaren 765LT. One of 765 making quite the sound in here as it comes to visit, and we get these two cars together in the same colours, and the G technically, which is Topaz skin in exactly the same colour. 
MSO Cerulean Blue, this famous colour on the channel. And look at this, just awesome. The chairs are departing. Yeah, they can't stay forever. Oh, I'll be back. <laughs> We are, of course, going to do an obligatory photo shoot. So I'm going to pull the Senna forward. Everything obviously is a little bit more staggered at the moment. And then we'll have the two cars side by side. This is currently in race mode. Now, when you keep the car in race mode, each time you start it, you do have to just go back through and press race mode again to make sure it stays in the lower ride height, which with this makes it look much better than when it's up. It actually drops it by 3.4 centimeters, which is about two. What is it, one and a half inches? Sorry, one and a half inches at the front, and it's about one inch at the back, I think two and a half centimeters. So it just looks a little bit more race track prepped. But one interesting thing I've seen with Senna's is that each car actually has a slightly different ride height for whatever reason. There's something that changes from one to the next. So I've seen some that look much higher, some that look a little bit lower, changes a little bit depending on the setup. But let's get this started, and then we'll pull it forwards and get these cars lined up. Well, this is cool. So the 765LT belongs to Zach Troy, who has just picked it up and brought it to come and take some photos with these two side by side, both in the famous MSO Cerulean Blue, an absolute spot on match to one another, it has to be said. This car with the gloss exposed carbon fiber, in fact, all of the exposed carbon fiber, the front splitter, the headlight inserts, the vents that you have on the bonnet, the louvers over the arches, the mirrors, the roof panels. You could spec the cars either with a glass panel on the roof as I have on the Senna or with the carbon fiber, the optional MSO snorkel as well on the back that you have here in the exposed carbon, all looking magnificent. The satin black wheels, some of the orange accents that you can see as well, the LT badging, the calipers, and some of the extra details that have been added to that particular car. Those two, of course, together though, two absolute weapons, very, very fast cars. 765 LTs have been dominating drag strip runs pretty much wherever they go. 765 horsepower, as the name suggests, 800 horsepower in the center, which is slightly lighter with a little bit more downforce, but downforce actually equates to drag at lower speeds, especially in the straight line, helps a little bit more with cornering, but it would be really interesting to drive these two back to back on a racetrack to compare them directly one to the other. Well, I can tell you is that with them sitting here side by side, you can see a little bit how the 720S that had come before evolved, of course, to create the Senna, which is effectively an LT LT, you could say. This car is specced with the Senna bucket seats, finished with the orange perforations. That was an option you could do with blue, and I actually considered for the Senna as well, with the embroidery on the headrest MSO chassis number 69 of the 765, all of the carbon fiber, also like mine, with a painted 12 o'clock stripe, up on 12 o'clock stripe on the top of the steering wheel. Really, really, really nice car, wonderful example. Basically delivery mileage, having just been collected, literally just before now. Yeah, really awesome to have those two here together in the garage. This has been a very fun blast from the past because we first filmed together in 2013. Yeah, it's quite a while ago. Time has flown. Those were the car spotting days where I introduced you to the world of the car Prazzi and all of that side of things. Yeah. And now here we are. You have a YouTube channel as well. I know, isn't that weird? <laughs> that, I never foresaw that. <laughs> things have evolved a lot back then. Yeah. You were saying I had, a, was it 120,000 subscribers? 120 or 130,000 subs, which was it's, a big deal then. I, I mean, it still is a big number. It, yeah. It's crazy to think about it now. Um, you know, that's still the size of, well, larger than a football stadium or a, a big town of people or even a small country in some cases. Yeah. That's a whole lot of people. Well, thank you to all of those of you who are here. It's still more than this channel has on the Museum channel, so we, we might get there. Yeah. But obviously the Idle Chat video is over on your channel. Yes. We talked through a lot of different things, which I think would be interesting for people to learn even a little bit more about, you know, what I do and what I used to do. And yeah. How well, and, and seeing you not on your channel, I suppose, in a yeah, different light. Yeah, in a different mode. light, in a different light, answering, answering some questions and things. I'm sorry we've not been able to jump on the Sega Rally. I know, I will have to come back for we'll, that. We'll get that running. You'll have to come back when this has all evolved and changed and become, I guess, the next 
chapter the next generation of it all yeah i'm looking forward to it looking forward to it. I'll, I'll bring one of my like terrible cars i actually would genuinely enjoy it <laughs> like like seriously it's, it's easy to think that all we care about is the supercar stuff but it really isn't that's obviously my personal direction i've chosen to go but that's not the only thing that yeah. you know classics tuner cars modified stuff jdm things all sorts of things you know yeah. i'm here for the cars or it's always been about the cars Thank you for coming. Thank well, you for bringing the seats. Thank you, too. That's all right. I've packed them up. The chairs have made their way. They've now been loaded back behind the chimney. <laughs> You're off for your journey home. It was great to see you. It's been yeah, a couple of years. And um, it won't forward. be another couple of years. I look forward to catching up again. Yeah, no, thank you. Thank Thanks you. ever so much. It. Sounds the part. So the 765 LT is also going to be departing. And then we'll park up some of the cars. Plus, there are a few more things I would like to show you. But I need to come over get the shutter opened up, get everything ready to drive the car on out. We are going to be mounting these slightly more tidily in the future than how they are at the moment and probably taking off the high guys and me from there. We need to tidy up some things we've had on the filming today. But how it goes. This fantastic car currently with the wing up and in place to depart for today. See you later Johnny. Take care. Have a good drive. We'll see the chairs another time. Right, back inside. We're going to have a bit of a shuffle around with some of the cars. That means plenty of startups and moving the things we have on this side ready for the SLS Black Series to come back. And maybe something else, you never know. So... <laughs> Tom going for the loud start. That's always frankly ridiculous. Right, I need to actually wave him back. Oh. Perfect, that's nicely lined. We'll probably be able to do some of the others just by pulling handbrakes and sliding them. This is just a handbrake and then slide, he says. We need to be careful of the doors. <laughs> do you know what? I'm going to the front, push on the headlight. I've got the car, you just... Slide it slowly, slowly does it, slowly does it. Oh, bit further, bit further, bit further. There we go, that's good. Nicely lined up. So easy. I love how even the Focus has a carbon fiber handbrake. Yes, that was part of it being the heritage. It's quite a nice little touch there. And then this, same story. You grab that, we come around to the front. We give the car a push and stop. We probably want to go a touch forward, but don't know if we can be bothered. That will do. Vantage, we're gonna have to start though. Are we? No, that's a handbrake. We can do this, I think. Yeah, Let's I mean, try. Yeah. I, I don't actually have the key on me, so... It's a fly-off handbrake. Oh, We're locked. One moment. <laughs> we need the key for that one. So we can shuffle that back a little bit. And then shortly, we'll also get the plate changed on it. Right, around here. This is just handbrake and give it a pull. It's going to be significantly heavier than the other. Yes, it is. Shall we just give up now? Yeah. <laughs> That's either jammed on. We'll try and push. It's a bit warm in here today, so it's not... I, I, Tom, I think we need to start that. <laughs> it's not, it's not going to work. That's either heavier or locked on from taking it out for a drive, or who knows what exactly. Could have been parked in gear. Who knows? Do they park in uh, gear? Or do they yeah, I think they gear? do park in gear. I think it is parked in gear. I think that's exactly what's going on. Let's see. There we go then. It felt like that was impossible. So you just need to go back like. Tiny amount. There we go, done. This is such a attention to detail thing to line all of the cars up so that when you come down towards the end of the line and you look back, they all look neat and tidy. I'm sorry for the obsessive attention to detail with all of this. It's all good. But it does look cool when they're parked like that. It does, it's worth it in the end. It definitely is. So GT8 next. Because we're going to shuffle that in towards the wall a little bit more. It's a long way out at the moment. That will need to be brought forwards and then manoeuvred back. But to do that, I'm going to come and move some of these random center parts because we're going to pull it back towards this space. GT8 time from one Aston to the next. This one's a little bit noisier. Just a little bit. Just a little. Only a little bit. <laughs>
situ, still in race mode, lined up, looking awesome. This is starting to become much more efficient with the space, ready for additional cars to return. Let's have the start up of the GT. We're going to need to give this a clean. You can't see it right now, but when you get out, the underside of the door, it's a nightmare. Absolute nightmare. I hate them because you can't get it when it's closed. And the last thing you want to do is jet wash it when the doors are open. Yes. This is one of the problems with it. So. Yeah. We'll we, find a way. It's always the same with this car. But anyway, it's a cool thing. <laughs> The worst the things is the location of the, the handbrake and all of them. Because yes. As much as they're all electric handbrakes, some of them you pull towards you, some of them you push away from you, and you never know until you're in it. And then and you wait and you hear the noise of the electrical whir. And it's not even just the push or pull, it's where they are. It, it, uh, trust me, I don't even know. Oh, that sounds disappointing. It really does, especially after we need that, to fix this. We'll, we'll, we will fix this. It's funny in comparison the lovely sound of so many of the slightly older cars. Right, let's um, line this up. Perfect. That looks nice. There we go. And they're straight to one another. They're straight to one another. Yeah, it's all good. And then we've got space here for, well, the SLS and another one and who knows what. It's a That's controversial topic. Is that the most disappointing V8 noise ever? I think so. I do. The most disappointing V8 sound that has ever been heard. Right there. Uh, do you know what else? The BMWs, the M5 and the M8. Yes. Similarly. Yes, although I think less so, because again, they are more of a luxury car, so you almost expect an element of quietness, but with this, you, you look at it and you expect. You, you expect, expect it to sound like it looks. You expect it to sound like the old 6.2s, like a DCAT. Yeah, a DCAT W204, but so, no. Such a shame. Oh well, looks like the LT, is the LT's ignition still on? Quite possibly. It looks like it with the headlights staying on. We will fix that. If you press the button once, does it actually turn that off? You lock it? I don't even know. I'm going to find the right key. Senna key, Ford GT key. It's one of these. That one. Yeah, that turned it off. It know. was definitely unhappy before that. That's cool, we've basically just made ourselves an extra space. Which is, well, the purpose for that, ready for the SLS to return soon. I'll take the Taycan back later on. But yeah, I'd say that's, that's looking pretty cool. We've got, how many? Seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13 cars in here at the moment. Absolute madness. And now we've got the whole massive unlocking affair, or sorry, locking affair, I should say. G, Heritage, Yaris, Vantage Roadster, 
This is like, how quickly can you find the right key to do them all? <laughs> the AMGs. Some of the cars, you can tell when they're locked because the mirrors fold. As you can see now with those two, some of them, like the GT4, you can't. Um, and then the same, you get the party lights of the 675 LT. It's funny how it always does that flashing sequence. The GT makes a loud click to confirm it's locked. Can't find the M3. No, that's not here, just the key's here. That's, that's ironic. Um, oh well, I bought the key in anyway because it was in my pocket from taking it home just before. But everything else is now locked, apart from the Taycan. Ready for me to depart with it shortly. And we've also pulled things just forward a touch so we've got a little bit more space back here for whatever else is going to happen and get a feel for the layout. Because I'm thinking when we've got the storage room down the back, we have a channel here almost which could be where the Vantage Roadster and something else that won't move so frequently could live. Perhaps something that's a blast from the past. And obviously this layout works with the idea here and then when we want to install some storage ramps that can become straighter and have eight cars or we could keep it diagonal and keep it seven not entirely sure at this stage the cars are all plugged in now back on their ctec smart chargers keeping all of those batteries good and also the taycan is unplugged because you don't want to overcharge it but i'm not going to take that car home today i'm actually going to leave it here that's basically the dedicated ev charging bay however we do this down the line that's how it's going to stay I'm gonna take home the Vantage Roadster for the first time I've actually driven it home other than having it here for some short runs and short errands. But yeah, we've got a good idea of how all of this is shaping up even more. Everything just tucked up a little bit. It takes a lot longer than you would think, but it's a great opportunity for us to visualize where this is going. And we're still so much in the early stages that we wanna get it right. Before we install car lifts and before we install the office and the mezzanine, obviously we want to know exactly what we're doing so that we don't regret it and want to change things a little bit later on and at this stage obviously thanks to our partners we're picking up lots of things from ebay that we can reveal all of soon to share with you what we're getting up to and of course also the ctec smart chargers that are saving the lives of the cars as well but for today as you can probably tell it's been another late night here at the Schmuseum, so we're going to go home and have a rest <laughs>